the law of patience and process. The law of patience and process. James chapter 5 verse 7 to 8. Oh, I love this law. I really want to talk about it. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord is at hand. This is one law that everybody and everything on earth must subscribe to. The law of patience and process. As far as living on earth is concerned, your life will be factored into the law of process. It is time that processes everything. And your growth will always be based on the process that you go through. Your calling has a process that it must follow. Even your career has a process. Where is Dr. Amali? I saw Dr. Amali somewhere here. Did you become a doctor overnight? No. He went to secondary school. Finished. Got the requirement in Waiek. Got admission to university. I'm sure they celebrated in his house when he got the admission to study MBBS. Because in Nigeria, it has become a prayer point to, to be admitted to study medicine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. when you started in 100 level you thought they would start tearing human body in a lie they say go and do science we are not sure that science we did in secondary school is okay so go, go and brush yourself and then from there 200 level you start touching cadavers dead bodies and biochemistry and all of that 300 level and then you have to sit for M MB what they call that preclinical finals or what uh huh that exam that is tormenting. You sit for it and you go praying that you will pass. You finish from there, you enter MB4, MB5, MB6, you write the exams and then you become a doctor. Process. <laughs> you see, let me tell you the truth. When God calls you, he will show you the end from the beginning. But what he will not tell you which you should know is that between that end and the beginning is a process that time will take you through. You know, time does not change things. Time only reveals things. It is process that changes things. Your developmental stages will be revealed based on the process that you succumb to. So how does God make a mighty prophet he will start with you by being a prayer warrior. Then he keeps you in the prayer band for five years. You see more visions than the head of the prayer band, but he will never ask you to lead prayers. For five years, you have been in that prayer band. You have never led prayer in the church. Yet God says, I'm sending you as a prophet to nations. It's all process. It's all process. God says, you are going to pass to a mega church. Guess how you started? An usher. And if not even the usher that sees the main door, the usher that they keep somewhere, you start catching people as they are falling. Meanwhile, you don't know that as you are all those people you are catching, multiply that number by 100. That's the number of people you will pass on in the future. Process. There are many reasons for why God takes us through process. He tries our heart. First of all, you know, the size of faith you start with in your work with God. It's not going to be the same size that you will use to enter into the fullness of what God wants for you. So your faith will need to grow. So God will have to subject you to true process because it's in process that your faith will be growing from one stage after the other. Most times we are myopic in our understanding about what God has determined for our future. And God knows that that myopic vision that you have is not enough to sustain you into that future. And so he will need to take you through a process. If God wants to raise you as a billionaire, start by believing God for 50,000 first. You will not just arrive into, into billions one day. If you do that, you will be like Solomon. You don't know what Solomon did? He squandered everything now. Even though there was so much, but he enjoyed everything at the end. He said, vanity upon vanity is vanity. Because he didn't work for anything. He just came, he met riches. In fact, God did not allow David to build the temple. 
but the kind of things that David kept for the temple was enough such that Solomon will come and offer the first thing he will do is offer a thousand bond offering but you know say that guy game on you the reason why we have a lot of rich men today and their children being wayward and all kinds of now they have justified their useless lifestyle by being what they call social media influencer what do they do show the number of cars that their fathers bought for them show the mansions that their father bought for them show the rolex wristwatch that their father bought for everything where you get now your papa buy for you you find a lot of rich a lot of wealthy let me tell you the truth most of the wealth in africa now if if care is not taken it will not go from one generation to the other because you have a lot of spoiled brats who don't understand the process it took for their father to get to where they are you think people just become billionaires in dollars overnight is blood sweat and tears the willingness to go through process process you can't cut corners in life oh. it's a law it will govern everything that will happen around you in the kingdom in your calling in your career in your profession even in family process process no woman becomes a wonderful and a good wife overnight no they learn first of all when they come from their mother's house they still think they are the daughters of their fathers until one day there's a huge quarrel between them and their husband and then waiting for somebody to pet them because every time they quarrel with their mother their father will pet them this time around the person you quarrel with will not pet you and then you now realize i don't marry you are you hearing what i'm saying it's process when she was in her father's house she and her mother can fight any small thing hey, they'll argue you know she has not given birth then when she gets married and pushed once in the labor room and saw hell and came back the next time she travels to the village she will kneel down and greet her mother why? process process no man becomes a father overnight process it starts from being, you know, when he's a, a young boy, he's just going around looking for every girl, telling them you are the sugar in my tea, the cockroach in my cupboard. No problem. That, that boy, you see, he's still very stingy. He's still a very selfish person. Get married first. Then your wife becomes pregnant and you have to sweep. You that have never swept in your father's house, you have to sweep because your wife is pregnant. You have to cook food. In the night, she wakes you up. He's paining me here. He's paining me. Do I put pillow here? And that's how you do till your morning. And you, in the morning, you are looking like someone who drank. Who, who took <laughs> your eyes are. It's process. It's part of the journey to becoming a father. The hallmark of parenthood is sacrifice. God wants to raise you as a spiritual father to many, many men and women of God. And process will start. You will have some sons and daughters that will betray you, that will backstab you, that will gossip you, that will do all kinds of things to you. When you are able to heal from that and still love, God will say, This one can now be a spiritual father to many. You think it's easy? Process. So you must be willing to go through process. Don't rush with God. Allow God to take you. Where you are does not look like where you are going because. There are still many other developmental stages to where you are going to. How is a baby formed? Sometimes if you, if you see a baby in the mother's womb, when it is four weeks or five weeks or ten weeks, in fact, sometimes there's a, there's a stage it looks like a tadpole, a frog. It doesn't look like a child. But give it time. No farmer will plant in the farm and then go back two days later to dig and say, and the tea never grew process process i'm talking because for some of us god is your, where you are now is a phase in the process you must go through to where god wants you to be and let me give you a prophetic word god is releasing grace for you to endure the process oh you thought i'll say god would deliver you from it now you deliverance is not only from it's deliverance through Go through it. There are some fires you must go through. Some sufferings you must experience. 
you hunger must beat you one time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, you, there are some embarrassments you must go through. There are times when you will stay without a job and God is still glorified. Say amen to that. Mm -mm. Because we have microwave Christians now. They want it in two minutes, three minutes. In fact, some people are not even patient with microwave. They put the microwave and they are still checking it. The food on. <laughs> but he will always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Oh, sooner or later, you'll find in my favor. He's turning around for me. Don't worry, I'll give you the remaining two laws next week. Amen? Uh, but let's close here because of time. Process. Process. Let me give you a brief story of how we started. You know, God, I was, I'm tempted to say God scammed me, actually. And just in case you experience what I experienced. It's not scam. Let me explain. God did not tell me that I would preach. Well, somehow, I had the passion from small and here and there people said, but, you know, when you grow, become a teenager into adulthood, you pick up all kinds of things. Later on, you want to be a doctor. Later on, you want to be a businessman. All those lie, 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 lie. Everybody wants to be a doctor from childhood. Eventually, when we grow, not everybody is a doctor. <laughs> How many of you wanted to be a doctor? Please, raise your hand. Okay, if you are still a doctor, put your hand up. Some of you become doctors of poultry farm. Poultry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When they ask you those days, I say, I want to be a doctor. I want to. <laughs> jam, never jam you. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. God didn't tell me I was going to preach. I got admission, came to University of Maiduguri. God said, okay, raise an altar of intercession. So I did that for all the while we were in school. When we finished, I felt I was done with my job. Went back to Abuja and began to trust God for greener pastures. I was fasting. I said, God, what's the next thing? God said, go back to Meduguri. I said, you, are not, you, are, you have to be kidding me. So I now entered another fast, not, not for power. The fast was argument. Because I believe that if you press God too much, he will give you. I didn't know that the will of God that was conceived about me before I was born was what was prevailing over me. Fasted, oh, July, August, September, October, November. You know, there's a way when God really wants you to do something and you are trying to force God to another thing, he will stop talking. Has it happened to you? That means I've said my own. That's, that's, if God, his silence is a speech. When, you are, when God tells you something and you are trying to force another thing on God, you know that you are trying to force because you know. You know what God is telling you versus what you want. And why I didn't want me to do it was because how do you do ministry in a land that is filled with insurgency? Half of the population are IDPs. The remaining half, what do they have? I, I saw I was going to suffer. I knew it ahead. You know, just the way God told Paul through Ananias, he said, go and tell him how he must suffer many things for my sake. If I was Paul, I would say, I'll not do it again. No. I'll, go, I'll, I'll serve you as a Pharisee in Jesus' mighty name. Met one young man one time. I said, the hand of God is on your life. You, God, is call, God is going to call you to ministry. He said, no, let's serve God. I want to be a businessman. I'll be giving to God. I said, no, nah, lie. Your type looks like the type that will suffer. <laughs> go on. Amen. So this, I fasted, oh, December, all Sanam came. It was the, the, way, the, 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 the way of God's mercy to stop that fast. So all Sanam came, I had to stop the fast and all of that. 
And then, finally, I agreed. I said, okay, God, I will go and die. In Jesus' name. So I came back. The church I was serving, I, I was serving in a church in Meduguri then. I had to leave the church, distance myself from the members because you don't want to build on another man's foundation. It, it's not wise when, God call, when you are serving in a place and God calls you to minister and you take from that place. It's, it's, it's zero. And that's the reason why I can never fail because I didn't collect anybody from anywhere. And we started... Then we used to hold meetings in school and then you see a lot of crowd. It didn't start today. Every time we finish that meeting and I go back and I'm saying, God, thank you. God will say, go outside and start. Go outside. I say, Kai. Finally, I subscribed and went out. A month after we started, I met a man of God. No, not a, a month before we started, I met a man of God. He came to town to preach. So he was telling me, God showed him what I was going to do. And he was talking to me. And here's what he told me. He said, God said, for the first two years, you will suffer. Is that prophecy? He said, for the first two years, you will suffer so much, you, you will almost give up. At that point, I almost stood up. I said, yeah, it's all right. Take, take the wine I brought for you and let me go. And true as he said we suffered in the first two years as a ministry we suffered myself I suffered my health failed I was operated two times in one year I remember the second time during the operation when I laid down on the dentist's table and he left it was as though the Lord Jesus appeared to me there and he smiled and that was all he said and left and then gradually God began to take us through the process. In the suffering, I learned humility. I learned patience. I learned tolerance. I remember when we started that time, there was a lady who promised heaven and earth and disappeared when we needed her the most. And you know, some, some disappointments, God will allow it to happen so that you, you will not trust in men but in God. We were supposed to have partners meeting. She said, ah, she will, she will prepare this. She will cook food. Ah, me, ma, I was, I said, oh, God has raised partners for us. When we came that day, she was nowhere to be found. And many disappointments here and there. Till I came to a point where I was no longer doing ministry because of myself. I lost every, every glory or anything that you want to glory in. It died. It died within those two, three years. It just, it died. And it was from that point that God's hand began to rest upon us. So you see, what, we see, what you see us doing it today, whether we are paid for it or not, we will do it. You see, my zeal does not come from anything natural. It does not come from even people clapping for me. So it's not now that God is helping us to become in a way, famous. No. The Bible says, whether we live or die, is for the Lord. Allow God to take you through the process. Suffer the pain. Pain does not kill. Actually, pain is a teacher. It tells you you are not dead yet. Because if you are dead, you won't feel pain. So the reason why you are feeling pain in that situation is because you are not dead yet. That means what it is not meant to kill you. And if it's not meant to kill you, it is meant to perfect you for your glory. The Bible says in Psalms 138, in verse 7, it said, Though I walk in the midst of troubles, you will revive me. You will stretch forth your hand towards me, and your right hand will save me. It said, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Verse 8, O oh God, do not forsake the works of your hands. Are you waiting on God for a dream? A vision? Did God make you a promise? I came to tell you that it was true. God is well able to bring it to pass. But you must go through the process. Joseph was meant to be a prime minister in Egypt. To salvage the entire nation of Israel. And even the whole world. But the pathway to the palace was the pit. And the prison. 
the process will not look like where you are going to because you are going through it and God will give us grace to go through grace for long suffering are you hearing what I'm saying to those of you that God has called into ministry mm, suffering they will roll up your sleeves and get ready to suffer are you hearing me there was a time I fasted there was nothing to break the fast it was Lipton how many of you Lipton tea black glory to God there was another time I fasted there was nothing but raw granite and I'm convinced in my mind that there's milk in raw granite so I broke it and ate that the milk is I'm telling you are you hearing what I'm saying there was a time myself and my friend Israel we were fasting and praying that time that was where we were. I, I, I shared the story before we use holy communion to break the holy communion in the church we were serving you know they will not finish it so the remaining one will now remove it. May God have mercy on us. We remove it and mix it with water in the name of when you bless it and sanctify it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Gary plus grace is balanced diet. Say amen to that. You better say amen. Just in case you are going back to drink that Gary. Amen. But it will not be there forever. A day will come when God will honor you. And the day that God determines that it is over and it's time for you to enter rest, you will not even know. It will be like every other day. Here's a broke guy in ministry. And then the first time I saw millions. It was not one million. It was millions in my account. I said, now so person life they change. You know that song? I never see anyone like this. But hear me. One of, I'm grateful to God and time will fail me to tell you and this is just my story. Every, there are people here who have stories. Some of you in business. Some of you are millionaires today in business but you know what you went through. You know how you ate coconut and gari. You know how you suffered. Are you hearing what I'm saying? One of our sisters, who is a very wealthy uh, uh, business person in this town, she told me she started her business by borrowing money to buy coat. Not suit, coat. Not the kind of suit that uh, Pastor Zion is wearing. That's suit. You know coat? Do you know coat? That one that the shoulder is as thick as Michael Jackson's. Uh, uh, she bought coat. Are you hearing me? Stand on your feet. We are going to pray.